When firefighter Stephen Kesting arrived at the burning warehouse, the blaze was already dangerously out of control, the worst he'd ever seen. He soon found himself inside, searching desperately for a fellow firefighter who was lost somewhere in the flames. He called out for his missing teammate, as he'd been trained to do, but a key part of the training had also been to carefully stop, look, and listen. No easy task when you're in the midst of an adrenaline-fueled crisis. It was during just such a habituated pause that his team noticed something. A tiny bit of a glove sticking up through the debris. Sure enough, it was their teammate Rob. They dug him out and dragged him to safety just seconds before the building collapsed. Stephen and his fire brigade were lauded as heroes, and they absolutely are. But he attributes the rescue not to heroic determination and self-control, but rather to the drills he and his team did to hone their default reactions and ensure they would respond wisely in an emergency. When a given behavior is repeated over and over in a consistent environment, and when positive feedback accompanies its execution, it tends to become automatic, a habit. Interestingly, research by Brian Galla and Angela Duckworth shows that many of those around us who seem to have tremendous willpower, people who run three miles every morning or hit the books hardest at school, owe their apparent self-control to good habits. Their good decisions have come to resemble instincts. So even though you might not have ever thought about drilling behaviors like flossing and healthy eating, the way you drill your skills as a pianist or firefighter, that's just what you should do. Once a good habit is established through deliberate repetition, your desired behavior will start to happen more naturally as your mind is simply able to follow its accustomed path of least resistance. What's truly ideal is when training a habit isn't even necessary. A simple switch can sometimes facilitate better behavior when the barrier to change is that we're wired to do what's easiest. At the University of Pennsylvania, medical staff had been overprescribing brand name medications instead of cheaper but chemically identical generic drugs which was costing patients millions of dollars every year. Even though caregivers wanted to do the right thing, it was easier to remember the brand name and type it into their computers. Recognizing this, while working on the software that pen physicians use to send prescriptions to pharmacies, an IT consultant made a small change to the user interface. He added a checkbox. From then on, unless a physician checked that box, whatever drug they prescribed would be sent to the pharmacy as a generic. Since doctors like the rest of us tend to take the path of least resistance, they very rarely check the box, just 2% of the time. As a result, Penn's generic prescription rate shot up to 98%. This is an example of a set it and forget it system, or a default. And there are some you can use to encourage positive change in your own life. For example, you could keep only healthy food in the fridge, or set the New York Times as your browser's homepage instead of Facebook. The takeaway here is that we're all a little bit lazy. We tend to take the easiest path. But once we recognize that, we can use it to our advantage. Whether you can implement a simple switch or use a burst of motivation to establish a habit, once your default behavior becomes a desirable one, positive change will flow more naturally.